Welcome to your graduation ceremony. We are now live on YouTube and your ceremony will begin. Hello, good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Professor Li Wei. I'm the Director and Dean of the UCL Institute of Education, more popularly known and fondly known simply as the IOE. It's my honor and privilege to welcome all of you to UCL's 2021 virtual graduation ceremony. I'm delighted to see so many graduates from the Department of Education, Practice and Society here with us today. And I know that we have many friends and family members watching as well. We hope you are as proud as we are of this group of graduates and what they have achieved. Obviously, we wish we could have been celebrating in different circumstances this summer. But until we can celebrate safely together, I'm delighted that we are able to come together to do this virtually today. We we'll tried our very best to replicate the experience you would have had this summer. We'll be sharing a short video from our provost and president. You'll hear speeches from myself, Professor Brad Blitz, head of the department, and we'll also hear from a graduate, previous graduate, about what life is like after you finish your degree at UCL. But first, a little housekeeping. I'm sure many of us are quite familiar now with virtual meetings. Please do feel free to share messages of congratulations in the chat function at the bottom of your screen. But otherwise, please stay muted until called upon to unmute. Graduates will be announcing names in groups. Once your name has been announced, we encourage you to turn your cameras on and at the end of each group, we'll offer you our congratulations and then ask you to, your, to, to turn your cameras off before we move to the next group. Now I'm going to introduce you to our virtual platform party that joins us today to celebrate with you, who you can see on your screen. Colleagues, as I introduce you, please do unmute yourself and say hello to our audience. Professor Brad Blitz. Hello, congratulations to all of you. Dr. Sue Taylor. Hi everyone, congratulations to all of you. Dr. Will Brim. Hi everyone, congratulations. This is a really wonderful opportunity to, to celebrate with you. Dr. Ian Warwick. Hi, welcome everyone. Lovely to see you. Very well done. Congratulations to you all. Dr. Abil Namafini. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to be with you, to celebrate with you today. I will be seeing you shortly as you graduate. Dr. Adam Unwin. Hello. Well done, everybody. Good luck. Thank you all. I hope I have not missed anyone from the platform party. I now declare this ceremony open and we'll hear from the provost and president, Dr. Michael Spence. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Spence, president and provost of UCL. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all today to your virtual graduation ceremony. And I'd like to offer my wholehearted congratulations to you as you graduate from UCL and move forward to the next stage of your lives. Of course, I speak to many of you dispersed across the world today. We can agree that this situation isn't and hasn't been ideal, and we'd prefer to celebrate in person, but that doesn't diminish your remarkable achievements in any way. The whole UCL community is behind you, and we're in awe of the resilience that you've shown in the face of the challenges posed by the pandemic. Each of you has shown what you can achieve, even under the most trying circumstances. This year marks the 195th anniversary of UCL's founding. We continue to base our principles and beliefs on those of Jeremy Bentham, a commitment to social justice and the availability of education to all. At UCL, we've always believed in changing the world for the better. And as graduates, you'll carry that goal forward. You're a part of UCL's history, but just as importantly of its future too. This is not the end of your UCL journey. You're joining an impressive global alumni community of over 300,000 graduates who support and celebrate each other and who go on to achieve remarkable things around the world. UCL and the alumni community is here for you, not only as you take the next step in your career journey, but for life. So thank you, thank you and congratulations. I look forward to a time when we'll be able to come together in person to further celebrate your amazing achievements. I'm now delighted to introduce Professor Brad Blitz, Head of Department, to present the graduates. I'm now delighted to present our graduates. I have the pleasure in presenting to you these candidates who have been awarded a postgraduate certificate, postgraduate diploma, Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, or Master of Science. The following, candidates have been, the following candidate has been awarded a postgraduate certificate in education and international development, Cyprian Kumwaka. The following candidates have been awarded postgraduate diplomas in education and international development, Meha Dayal, Sarah Diane Nelson. Can we give them a round of applause, please? Well done, Following candidates have received a Master of Arts in Comparative Education. Ezra Hassin Selik, Noor Mohammed Hussein Hegazi, Yikon Hu, Fangju Jin, Noriko Kimura, Lin Jin Li, Zhao Lin Li, Yaning Liu, Rocio Martin Gomez, Kilu Miao, Metuya Nadihla Mohammed Taufik, Yehiwi Kian, Mariam Riaz, Yakin Shi, Zian Song, Amanda Claire Walker, Jingyan Wang, Catherine Louis, oh, excuse me. Can we give them a round of applause, please? We, can, we can continue with the following candidates who've been awarded a Master of Arts in Comparative Education. Shenli Wang, Jeju Wang, Qianhan Xia, Zhao Yu Xu, Zhe Yun Yi, Lu Yin, 
Shanhui Yang, Yifan Zhang, Yuting Zhang, Zhenyuan Zhao, Lei Zhang. Can we give them a round of applause, please? We continue with graduates, the following candidates who have received a Master of Arts in Education and International Development. Jama Hussein Ali, Manuela Faustina Na Kwadua Ankra, Warda Arif, Andrew Scott Bell, Cynthia Leticia Benavente Yaregui, Catherine Louise Bridge, Sophie De Rick, Anna Hatta, Janda He. Can we give them a round of applause, please? We continue with the following candidates who have also been awarded a Master of Arts in Education and International Development. Barat Khanna, oh. Alexandra Fay Logan, Roberto Lopez Melinjon, Rachel Jeannie Looney, Philippa McDonald, Christopher McCabe, Kazunaga Murakami, Sadishav Nayan Pali, Ora No, Anjali Tamnani Harakshin, Sanghun Park, Odok George Ambrose Philip, Maria Pizzini, Arvind Rajagopal, Revati Ramanan, Nanan, excuse me, Shereya Vepad Samant, Estefania San Miguel Zapata, Rachel Sarah Smith, Noor Hidiatus Sayarafia, Kejun Tong. Can we please give them a round of applause? Congratulations. We continue with the following candidates who've been awarded a Master of Arts in Education and International Development. Bakari Princess Don Yuku, Wanji Wang, Liu Menglu Zheng, Georgina Kate Adams. These are the following candidates, I should add, who have received a Master of Arts in Education, Gender and International Development. Georgina Kate Adams, Sadia Ahmad, Onyeka Wisdom Akuna, Jui Bal, Ben Adam Clermont, Angela Mame Afua Koranteng, Shanmuga Priya Mishra, Raisa Rahemin, Purvi Shroff, Emily. Catherine Subden, Zhanshuan Zhang, and the following candidates have received a Master of Arts in Education, Health Promotion, and International Development. And that's it. Jing Kui, Rania Mohammed Hamdi, maybe not many. Annabelle Mary Hoff, Shun Wan Hu, Hongji Li, Saishi Liu. Can we please give them a round of applause? Hey, very well done. Brilliant. Well done. And we continue with the following candidates who have received a Master of Arts in Education, Health Promotion, and International Development. Jun Ha Yi, Yin Ying Tu, Eva Vasquez Costas, Xiao Wang, Wen Yi Wang. Zhenzhu Zhu. The following graduates have received a Master of Arts in Educational Planning, Economics, and International Development. Kirsten Britta Olanika Akarele, Jasmine Bornage, Webhav Jindal, Tasvid Ahmad Khan, Sara Bashir Malik. Kaidian Romain Newsom, Marsha 
a war or battle, Ronald or the humble or Mute, Genoine, Beatrix, Monica, Widaja, Hisuyu, Rokon, Jean, Modir, Jumabai, Melissa, Zuniga, Herrera. Can we please give them all a round of applause? The following candidates have been awarded a Master of Arts in Philosophy of Education. Monica Ann Brady, Yi Gong, Katrin Canova, Ping Su, Ying Wei. The following candidates have been awarded a Master of Arts in Policy Studies in Education. Julia Bachi Ajio, Jinli Fan, Yuta Furoshima, Guangri He, Wing Yin Li, Mutiat Omabola Olaifa, Eli Claudia Robinson La, Paula Susanna Sarinen, Verni Arul Keys Samuel, Francis James Sonic, Laura Onaji Meski Udo. The following students have received a Master of Arts in Professional Education and Training. David John O'Daly. The following candidates have been awarded a Master of Arts in Social Justice and Education. He Ann, Hilda Ioboso Abuenaga, Rachel Antoinette Edwards Coots. Vera Lucia Braga Fernandez, Lin Xin Hao, Ying Zhao Huang, Noah Ren, Nicole Shembri, Luciana Schwitzer, Schwitzer, Zion Sengule. The following candidates have been awarded a Master of Arts in Sociology of Education. Luyao Li, Colette Mary Madeline Mahio, Sayaka Seto, Biji Wang, Ji Wen Zhang, Jin Zhang. Rajendra, so the following students have received a Master of Business Administration and Higher Education Management. Rajendra Kandel, Tulio Federico Lobetti. The following graduates have received a Master of Science in Engineering and Education. Joanna Louise Donegan Edwards. Can we please give them a round of applause? We now turn to the successful candidates for degree of Doctor in Education and Doctor of Philosophy. Doctoral candidates undertake a program of independent research over at least three years. They must demonstrate a capacity to pursue original based thought and action and provide a distinct contribution to their subject. A research degree requires a total commitment and is at the very pinnacle of academic study. I therefore have the pleasure in presenting to you the following candidate who has been awarded the degree of Doctor in Education in Applied Theater and Leadership in Higher Education. Dr. Michael Carklin. The following candidates have received a Doctor in Education in Cognitive and Educational Psychology. Dr. Naomi Kruger Aram. The following graduates have, graduates have received a Doctor in Education in Cultural Curriculum Mapping in Undergraduate Medicine, Dr. Fay Sara Gishan. The following graduate has received a Doctor in Education in Curriculum, Pedagogy and Assessment, Dr. Aitney Flynn. The following graduates have received a Doctor in Education in Education, Dr. Joy Carroll, Dr. Trung Tu Jian. 
The following graduate has received a doctor in education, practice, and society, Dr. Tomoya Sonoda. The following graduate has received a doctor in education in enterprise culture in further education colleges, Dr. Irene Brew Riverson. The following graduate has received a doctor in education in international education, Dr. Nicola Jane Papua. The following graduate has received a doctor in education in social sciences, Dr. Zhao Zhorong Chen. The following graduate has received a doctor in education in sociology of education, Dr. Brendan Peter Brian King. The following graduate has received a doctor of philosophy in comparative and international education, Dr. Annette Haya Michelle. Bamberger. The following graduate has received a Doctor of Philosophy in Comparative Education and International Development, Dr. Xiaoming Li. The following graduates have received a Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Dr. Diane Margaret Garsai, Dr. Julia Jeans, Dr. Adam Walton. The following graduates have received a Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Dr. Alison Mary Brady. The following graduates have received a Doctor of Philosophy in Education and International Development, Dr. Leila Adamson. The following graduates have received a Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Practice and Society, Dr. Panyota. Krista Dulidu, Dr. Mark Herrett, Dr. Karen Jeanette Lilly, Dr. Carla Alejandra Lopez Morillo. The following graduates have received a Doctor of Philosophy in Global Higher Education, Dr. Zanetta Bertot. The following graduates have received a Doctor of Philosophy in Sociology of Education. Dr. Manuela G. Mendoza Horvitz. The following graduate has received a Doctor of Philosophy in Therapeutic Residential Child Childcare, Dr. David Roberts. That concludes the graduates who have received doctoral degrees. Can we please all congratulate them and celebrate their success? Tremendous achievement. That concludes all of our candidates. I would ask that the virtual platform party all unmute themselves and please give all a round of applause to all of our graduates. Yeah. Very well done, everybody. Congratulations. 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 We're going to do a selfie. We're going to do all of it together. So. Oops. Thank you. You can uh, mute yourselves now. So I've prepared a short address for you. And it goes like this. There's an African proverb that if we stand tall, it's because we stand on the shoulders of many ancestors. You, our class of 2021, are standing tall and you've had to adapt quickly to reach this point. But while today belongs to you, let's remember that your journey did not begin at UCL. So may I please ask all of our graduates to turn to their parents and family members and others who set them on this path, this path to success, and let's give them a cheer too. We can't see you, but we know you're there. Now, this is a different type of graduation. We might say to use a popular word that it's unprecedented, except sadly, it isn't. This awful pandemic hasn't stopped. And this is the second time, in fact, we've had a virtual graduation and we are still online. We can't hide this fact. Last year, when it came to preparing for the graduation, I mentioned 
I mentioned the idea of recreating the Royal Festival Hall as a backdrop, also putting on my cap and gown, which is what I've now done today. But let me share a story with you about a surprising graduation experience. Uh, several years ago, I was asked to speak at a graduation ceremony in Germany. And what I hadn't realized was that while in the UK as in the US and other countries, the mortarboard cap and gown are symbols of university education. But in other contexts, they're nothing more than signifiers of older traditions and have been discontinued. The usual academic dress, the black gown, mine isn't actually black today, but normally they are, the mortarboard or cap are in fact leftovers from the medieval world when clerical rulers dominated the great European universities of Bologna, Cambridge, Paris, Oxford, Salamanca, to name a few. And we should note that these institutions did not resemble the liberal university as we know it today. While science and religion coexisted, and even more so in the ancient universities such as Alexandria, the concepts that we hold dear today of academic freedom were unknown in medieval and even later Europe. And those who challenged the orthodoxy, those who engaged in what we now call disruptive thinking were often brutally punished. And we only need to recall that Galileo, the father of modern science, was put on trial by the papal inquisition and forced to recant for writing that the earth moved around the sun. So the cap and gown were very much part of that tradition too. Over the centuries, as universities expanded their teaching and as new disciplines emerged, there was a change in academic dress. And you see a bit of that today. Hoods and gowns were decorated in different colors that reflected particular faculties and later different universities. And this color coding had a very practical purpose. It affirmed the authority of the institutions that conferred degrees on students. It also placed the emphasis not on the individual learner, but on the places of learning. The distinction between learners and institutions, something which we recognize, and we've just read out each of your names, was literally cloaked. We had to remove the gown to see the person. Now, flash forward to the 20th century, when we saw the expansion of universities, the mass um, education, movement of mass higher education in particular in the US, the UK and across Europe. And just as today, we find in other parts of the world where universities were vehicles of development, producing engineers and technical specialists. But they were also symbols of Cold War rivalry, of investment in military and later civilian innovation. And then crisis. Student unrest in France, Germany, the UK and USA May 1968 in particular, changed the way universities were perceived. They were no longer seen as sites of learning, but rather institutions that mirrored the power of the state. And for the demonstrators, these were oppressive states. Violence, unrest, police and military action. Who would have thought that universities would be places of physical danger? Well, we now know that is sadly also the case today. These demonstrations led to the reorganization of universities and the creation of new institutions in France and Germany, and even the redesign of campuses. I worked on one, which after the unrest at the University of California, Berkeley, the governors decided to construct a new campus where students couldn't congregate, at least not easily. Rather, they would walk through redwood forests and over bridges to access a series of disconnected colleges. It was beautiful, but the design was above all to disperse students. Academic dress was also consigned to the scrappy in both West and East Germany. In 1968, the third reform bill for higher education institutions in the then GDR abolished both the faculty structure and the use of academic dress. In West Germany students revolted against traditionalism at university in order to modernize teaching and learning conditions. Their famous slogan was under the robes, the must of a thousand years. 
And this also led to the abolition of certain customs, including graduation ceremonies. Gowns were burned. While academic dress has been reintroduced in some universities, there's wide variation. And there are different types of ceremony too. Last year, I watched online as the comedian Sasha Baron Cohen, of Borat fame, dressed up as the ignorant British character, Ali G. And in character, the comedian delivered a commencement address at Harvard. At Stanford, students participate in the Wacky Walk, a fancy dress parade where students hop in or enter the auditorium like circus performers. Here it is much more sedate, I should say. Now, I certainly don't want to encourage anyone to burn their robes and hope that all our students will want to celebrate a formal graduation. But I believe such ceremonies are important because just as they are social events that commemorate people, not just institutions, they are alongside weddings that say they give us an opportunity to be together with families and friends. And if there's one thing that this pandemic has taught us and keeps teaching us, it is sadly that we cannot take loved ones or happy occasions for granted, and we must celebrate when we can. So my concluding remark is that if this ceremony appears weird, actually it is just the next chapter in our history of academic adaptation, and it is just as meaningful, and I hope it is meaningful to you. So, Many, many congratulations to the class of 2021. You should all be very proud of your achievements, as are we. And once again, I would like to thank everyone who is here today and ask that they join in a great round of applause for all of our graduates today. Thank you. Does Henry? Well done, Papa. Um, I'm now delighted to invite uh, our director to give the faculty address. Thank you. As director and dean of the UCL Institute of Education, let me once again say many congratulations to everyone graduating today. Let me also say congratulations to your families and friends celebrating with you, who I know will be extremely proud of what you have accomplished. Graduate studies push us beyond our comfort zone in terms of engaging with new ideas and developing the confidence to put our own stamp on that knowledge and put forward new insights. But the rewards are considerable. The class of 2021, of course, shared an additional parallel journey, the shock and disruption of the COVID-19 pandemic. I must pay tribute to our students and staff for the way in which they have adopted, adapted and the resilience and collegiality they have shown. In the context of such disruptions, the things that remain constant including the ritual graduation, are even more welcome. While we can't yet be together in person, that should not diminish the enjoyment in being able to sit back and recognize the accumulation of a great deal of hard work. We can also look forward to think about the difference that hard work will make in the world. The IOE's mission is to improve lives and further social justice. It was founded in 1902 and from its roots in educating teachers for London, it has developed into a unique and world leading center for research on education and society. This year alone, to pick just a few examples, we have launched major new research program that will track cohorts of individuals over decades to understand social change, particularly the long-term societal impacts of COVID-19. 
recordings of our podcasts and events that share the IOE's ex expertise have received over 50,000 plays and across 110 countries. Meanwhile, the IOE is playing a key part in the UCL's new school of creative and cultural industries based in the UCL East campus in Stratford. We also remained number one in our field in the QS World University rankings for the eighth year in a row. But it is through you, our students and alumni, that the IOE makes the biggest impact. The careers you pursue and the role you serve in your wider communities. Through your studies, you will develop, you will have developed many tools to enable you to make a positive difference. You have read widely, applied array of analytical techniques and intellectual skills, debated, reflected, evaluated, understood the applications and limits of research, and respected ethical considerations. You have learned to present your findings and ideas to inform or convince others, and made sacrifices to achieve what you have achieved. While the current context presents a daunting world to move into, there are reasons for optimism in our recent history greater recognition of the impact of inequality and greater recognition of our interconnected, uh, interconnectedness at an individual, societal, and global level. There is a lot of talk of building back better. We must seize the opportunity to do just that. Next year, we'll be celebrating the IOE's 120th anniversary, marking the IOE's evolution and looking to what comes next. In terms of next phase in the IOE's development, we have two particular priorities. The first is to address societal problems with even greater conviction through challenge-oriented, solution-based and impact-driven work. Greater national in, in, and international collaboration and our work that spans disciplinary fields will be important aspects of that. The second priority is attending to decolonization. Enhancing the IOE's global reach and impact will also require genuinely decolonizing attitude, including meaningful collaborations with the diversity of communities in London, with the global South and with staff and students of the global majority. We hope that you will be part of next year's anniversary celebrations, but also that you will continue to engage with and help us on that journey. As well as an opportunity to offer congratulations, graduation ceremonies are also about saying thank you for the support of families and friends, colleagues and tutors. That is so pivotal to our student success. A heartfelt thank you from me to IOE colleagues and to our guests today for their part in our students' achievements. At this point, it just remain, remains for me to say that our graduates will continue to be part of the IOE and UCL family. You are now part of a truly global community of UCL alumni, some 300,000 strong. You can also join one of the numerous UCL alumni groups located in many cities and regions across the world. Please stay in contact with us. So as director and dean of the UCL Institute of Education, I now have the pleasure of formally conferring your degrees. In a moment, we're going to hear from one of our alumni members. David Stanley is a disability rights campaigner, teacher, music director, composer, and the founder of the, and CEO of the Music Man Project, a multi-award winning international music education service for people with disabilities. He holds a master's degree in musical analysis, a PGCE 
from UCL IOE, and the National Professional Qualification for Secondary School Headship. In 2021, David was awarded the Medal of the Order of the British Empire in the Queen's New Year's Honours for services to people with special needs. David was the 2020 Global Peace Ambassador for people with disabilities and became the UK government's Disability and Access Ambassador for Arts and Culture in 2021. He's also a member of the advisory panel for the National Plan for Music Education. He won the Lions International Outstanding Contribution to Community Award and was named a community hero by UK's community network in recognition for his efforts to teach vulnerable people during the COVID-19 pandemic. He reached the final uh, of both the 2015 and 2017 teacher music teacher awards for excellence and has been nominated for both a Pride of Britain award and for the 33 most inspirational leaders who had made a difference. Now, David Stanley. My name is David Stanley and I'm the CEO and founder of the Music Man Project, a full-time music education and performance service for children and adults with learning disabilities. I studied PGCE in music back in 1999. Congratulations to the current graduating cohort. I hope you use this experience and qualification as a platform upon which to build a fulfilling and rewarding career. I remember that I initially resisted some of what I was told during my studies at the Institute, particularly how to write lesson plans. Ironically, it was this discipline that I relied on the most in my early career as a teacher. And I subsequently published several volumes of lesson plans and textbooks for teachers and went on to qualify as a head teacher. My advice therefore is to value everything you have learned because you never know when you will need it. My long and successful career as a teacher and senior leader was only possible because of my PGCE. It also prepared me for my current position at the Music Man Project. I try to provide the same high expectations, the same determination to succeed, and the same value in the power of music that underpinned my education. But I do this for my musicians with learning disabilities. My students have gone on to break a world record, to perform to members of the royal family, to inspire 10,000 mainstream primary school children, and of course to perform at both the London Palladium and the iconic Royal Albert Hall. I have duplicated my service right across the UK and have even taught in India, Nepal, South Africa and the Philippines. Just as I was helped to fulfil my potential, I now help my remarkable students fulfil theirs. I think they are the best of humanity and I have the most rewarding job in the world. My time at the Institute instilled in me a, a level of confidence that I rely on to this day. Now, two decades after my own graduation, I talk to you as a proud recipient of an honour from the Queen and the UK Government's Disability and Access Ambassador for Arts and Culture. I also now sit on the advisory panel for the new National Plan for Music Education. So my career in many ways has come a full circle and my work will now inform the future direction of music education for many years to come. My advice is therefore to dream big, be determined and be creative in your career. Carve out your own distinct career path and most of all, Keep in touch with your extensive alumni network and peers. They will support you every step of the way.
Thank you. Thank you, David. Before we close the ceremony, let's have one final round of applause to all the graduates. Jen! Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, and most importantly, our graduates, that concludes our virtual graduation ceremony. I invite graduates to stay on for a short reception in which you will be able to take selfies and share them with your friends. Please also take the opportunity to visit our graduate uh, graduation website at the address posted in the chat to see messages from your teachers and video, a video from myself. I offer you my wholehearted congratulations and my very best wishes for the future. Thank you, keep in touch, and remember, we are IOE.